Good morning. Welcome to the study of Acts this morning. We are in chapter 4 today. It's the entirety of the chapter. Uh, and I want you to notice something here at the beginning of this chapter because you're reading this in portions every day. And this chapter opens with very important people still questioning Peter and John's healing of the poor man begging for alms outside of the temple uh, gate. They are still questioning that particular action. And you read that passage originally a few days ago. Uh, so it gives us pause to reflect on the persistent obstacles to the access to affordable health care for all in our own era, doesn't it? Uh, Willie Jennings says of this man who was healed outside of the gates, quote, the man healed is now a sign of the man resurrected from the dead, the author of life itself. And Jennings goes on to say, there is nothing inherently serious, holy, or dangerous in God talk. The holy words that bring consequences are words tied to the concrete, liberating actions of God for the broken people. Such holy words bring the speakers into direct confrontation with those in power. I think there's a lot of resonance with that notion and with this text where the powerful, the elite, the gatekeepers of the status quo are continuing to question the healing of a poor begging man who begged for not just alms but for attention as the disciples went to worship in the temple. And as I'm making this video today, uh, over 10 million people in the U.S. have lost their jobs in the last two weeks as a result of the pandemic and all of the precautions we are taking, all of the closures of companies and things of that nature, 10 million people are out of work. And we live in a society in which access to health care is tied to our jobs. Uh, and I want you to, to note here, as that kind of thing is brought more and more into social consciousness and in our, uh, uh, our debates over politics and health care and all sorts of things in the coming days, that Peter and John are not just criticized for their healing of this man. Peter and John were criminalized for speaking and acting against the status quo social order. That is why this is such a big deal for people. That's why there are so many threats and, uh, and accusations hurled against Peter and John and why they are imprisoned, criminalized. They know the threat of the revolution they are enacting in the spirit. Uh, it's, uh, it's why they pray here in this text for boldness, saying, And now, Lord, look at their threats and grant to your servants to speak your word with all boldness. Verse 29. They know the threat of the revolution to the status quo. It's why they bonded together in community to share all things in common. It was a threat to the status quo that they were bringing about this revolution guided by the Spirit. So I want to ask you this morning, as you engage this text, how will the church today, striving to be the church in a new context, striving to follow the revolutionary movement of the Spirit, how will the church today be called to confront the status quo to speak difficult truths about a social order that is bringing about brokenness in people's lives? How will the church be called to confront the unraveling of our social order in new, liberating, revolutionary ways that will be unmistakably good news to all?